Giving all praise and glory to the most high power, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as always. We're going to start with Colossians 3 and 17. We're looking at the Feast of Dedication tonight. Giving all praise and glory. That we are able to see another holy day and come together in this fashion. By Let's read. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. And whatsoever we say and do is going to be in the name of the anointed Savior. We give praise and glory to the Most High. And we thank the Most High in the name of the anointed Savior for allowing us to see another day closer to the kingdom to get it together. You know, get ourselves together. So let's look at St. John, the 10th chapter and the 22nd verse. Because we're going to see that, you know, Hamashiach Yawashai honored the Feast of Dedication. And that's what we're in right now, the Feast of Dedication for these eight days. Let's read it. The book of St. John, chapter 10, and verse 22. Con. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of, de of the dedication, and it was winter. Right, so you see it's around the same period of time that we're in right now. So it's, it was at Jerusalem in Israel, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. Read. And Hamashiach and Hamashai walked in the temple in Solomon's court. So now, Hamashiach is involved in the Feast of Dedication. He walked in Solomon's porch. Read. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be Hamashiach, tell us plainly. Right, so here come the Israelites around him and said unto him, How long do you make us to doubt? If you be Hamashiach, you be the Messiah, you be the anointed, you be the one that we've been waiting to come to redeem Israel through your blood. Are you Hamashiach? Not Yahawashai or any other name, Jesus or any other name that's used, but Hamashiach is very important. They didn't ask him that. They asked him, are you Hamashiach? There's only one Hamashiach. Read. Hamashiach and Hamashiach answered them. I told you, and ye believe not. So he's saying that he is Hamashiach, the anointed, the Messiah. He said, I told you, and you believe not. Read. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. So he's not doing anything in his own name. He's doing everything in the Most High's name. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's his name forever and ever and ever. They bear witness of the works that he done. Read. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. See? He said they don't believe. People don't believe because they're not of Hamashiach Yahushua's sheep until this day. That's all you know. They're not of Hamashiach Yahushua's sheep because they don't believe. Read. And I give unto them eternal life. This is how you get eternal life. You're going to give his sheep that belong to him eternal life. Not everybody. Read. And they shall never perish. Shall never what? And they shall never perish. They shall never perish. Read. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Yeah. See, ain't no man gonna be able to pluck a true disciple of Hamashiach that was shy that believe he is the Hamashiach out of his hand. Read. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. You see what it said? The most high have to give us to a Mashiach Yahushai. It says, the Most High gave a Mashiach Yahushai's seat to Hamashiach. He's saying the Most High is greater than any entity and nobody's able to pluck Hamashiach Yahushai's sheep out of the Most High's hand. Read. I and my father are one. So he's saying that Hamashiach Yahushai and the Most High agree. That's that one, in agreement. Because they're not the same. Get to St. John 14, 27 and should prove that they're not the same. He's just what he's saying. They're not the same entity. St. John chapter 14 and verse 28. 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, ye will rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father. 
for my father is greater than I. So they can't be the same <laughs> when he said the most high is greater than him, okay? Let's play that up. Now let's go to Daniels 8 and 21. Let's get into it. Daniels 8 and 21. In the book of Daniels chapter 8 and verse 21, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia. So the rough goat is the king of Grecia. That's the Greeks, the Europeans. Their first emperor is, is called the rough goat. We're going to see that that's Alexander the Greek. Read. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Right, so the great horn that's between his eyes is the first king. Now let's go to show you how the Apocrypha and the regular Bible that the Protestants took out, 14 books that they took out of the regular King James original authorized Bible coincides right with the Bible. Go to 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, and we'll read from 1 to 8. 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, from 1 to 8. The group said the rough goat, and that goat head is that five point pointed star turned upside down. That's the goat head. You got the two horns, floppy ear, and the goat teeth. That's their symbol. Right now, they just put it right in your face, blatant. That goat head, you see it all the time. The read. The first book of the Maccabees, chapter one. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chetty, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. Right, so this is Alexander the Greek, the first emperor of the so-called Europeans or the Edomite nation, their first emperor, he took down the Persian and Mede Empire. Persian and Mede Empire took down the Babylonians, you see? So this is coming into power, go ahead. The Greeks, go ahead, which are the Edomites, according to the Bible, read. And made many wars, and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth, and went through to the ends of the earth, and took spoils of many nations, so much that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. That's right, he could, that's his heart lifted up, his mind lifted up, made him pride. But he took down all the nations, man, and put them under subjection to the Europeans, as we know today. Or the Edomites, as the Bible defines them. Their first kingdom, read. And he gathered a mighty strong host. Which is an army. Host is army, read. And ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. Meaning they paid him what we call today taxes. Tributary. Go ahead. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Yeah, because he lived about 12 years after he ruled, about 12 years, then he died. Read. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable, honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So his four generals. Either my general was Cassander, Ptolemy, Seleucus, and Lassimachus. Lassimachus. Read. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. Yeah, I think from 20 to 32 years old, or 21 to 33 years old, something like that. It was, he was young. Go ahead. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. Right. So his servants, meaning his four generals that I just named, took over in his place, read. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. Yeah, once he died, they all came into power, who's from the authority in their different lands that they were ruling over, read. So did their sons after them many years. So their sons ruled right after they died, read. And evils were multiplied in the earth. Right. You see there? Evils will multiply in the earth. Get Proverbs 28 and uh, 16 and 4, I believe. Or 16 and 4. Proverbs 16 and 4. Read. 
book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 4. The Most High hath made all things for himself. So the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hath made all things for himself. Read. Yet even the wicked for the day of evil. Even the what? Even the wicked for the day of evil. Now we just read how when they came into power, evils were multiplied in the earth. Say, so yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. Job 9.24. So who the wicked? Book of Job, chapter 9, and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Right. So the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He, the wicked man, cover the faces of the judges there. If not, where and who is he? If you look at any television program, any movies that come out, Mashiach, Yahweh who they call Jesus Christ, always an Edomite. One way or another, they always take the time to, you know, cast a character that looks some, somewhat similar to who? Caesar Borgia. Pope Alexander VI of Rome, second son, you know? Always. Look at their magazines, they got even Time Magazine has, who is this? It's a picture of Jesus. They're Jesus. You know, Caesar Borgia, right on the cover. You know, so we know that Amashiach Galvashai was a brother, and the disciples are brothers, and the Israelites are brothers and sisters. You see what I'm saying? Of Negro, Indian, and Latino descent, primarily, scattered among all nations. So that's the wicked. And you see how it says evils were multiplying the earth when they came into power. Most I made them for the day of evil. What did they, how did they become that? Uh, give me uh, Daniel's 8, 21 and 22. Book of Daniel chapter 8 and verse 21. The Most High made them for the day of evil. That's how. We're going to find out how they got it, babe. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. So the rough goat is the king of Grecia, who we just read about, Alexander the Greek, babe. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Right. The first king was Alexander the Greek. Read. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it. Right. So now that being broken means. Alexander died, so we got to understand it already in the Apocrypha. He reigned 12 years and died. That would be by him, that being broken. Read. Whereas four stood up for it. I told you the four generals that stood up in his stead. Read. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. Right, but not in his power because he was dead. That's what I said, they all put crowns on their head. That's powers and authority that they had in different lands that they chose. Uh, go back to 1 Maccabees, first chapter, start at verse 9. 1 Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 9. Read to verse 13. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. Just like we just read in Daniels, read. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. And there came out of them a wicked brood. Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, the king, who had been a hostage at Rome. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Right, so he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Antiochus Epiphanes. Remember this cat, because this cat was wicked as ever. Remember, it said evils multiplied in the earth, and here he comes. Go ahead. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded men, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. See, wicked men of Israel say, Let us go and make a covenant, a contract, agreement with the heathen, with the Gentile nations. The number one nation was the Edomites, because they were the superpower of the earth. Go ahead. There are round of others. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. See, since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Just like it is to come out of her, my people, out of the way of America and so forth. Yeah, you might go through change, you might be dipped through the fiery furnace of affliction, but in the end, 
You know that eternal life of Mashiach Mashiach said you and sheep, eternal life is promised to you. That's what we have promised to us, whereas that's to live forever. You see? That's what we have promised to us. Read. So this device pleased them well. So this device pleased the wicked of Israel well. To be like the heathen. Let's we'll see what happened. Psalm 106, 35. What happened? By them doing this. That's what the most high sold us, man. Psalms chapter 106 and verse 35. But we're mingled among the heathen. See, we're mingled among these heathen. Like I say, he's gonna make a contract, an agreement with these heathen, read. And learn their words. Learn how to be like them. Learn their works. Psalm 96 and 5. We learn their works. Psalm 96 and 5. Psalm chapter 96 and verse 5. For all the all the gods of the nations are idols. So, so we learn idolatry. Go back to Psalms 106, 35. This is what they taught us how to follow Satan. How to represent Satan. How to worship Satan. Idolatry. Something contrary to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. Psalm 106, 35. But were mingled among the heathen and learned their words. Go ahead. And they serve their idols. There it is. Why they serve the idols? Because all the gods of the nations are what? Idols. We serve their idols. Read. Which were a snare unto them. Which was a trap. A snare is a trap. Was a trap unto us. Read. Yeah, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Just like people are being sacrificed today, the Molech, up in the Bohemian Grove in Northern California and so forth. You see all these people on the, on the walls of Mar Walmart and so forth, all over the country, where they, where they end up? Coming back home? No. You don't find these people, they're probably in a cage somewhere, ready for the sacrifice. And that's what we was doing, sacrificing our sons and daughters. Remember, we learned the ways of who? The heathen. This is what they're doing. This is what they've been doing. That's why, you know, you, you know that the uh, Catholic Church, they found all these bones underneath the Catholic churches and so forth. Children. Nuns probably have the children sacrificing them, man. That's what they've been doing. This ain't nothing new. Sacrifice the sons and daughters and the devils, man. It ain't no different than when you give your child over to these devils right now, man. And our people are doing the same thing now. Read that again, verse 37. Verse 37 of Psalms 106. Yet they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto them. Sacrifice their sons and daughters unto devils. First Corinthians, go that get first Corinthians 10 to 21. 20 and 21. Bring it on home. This is real. And what do they teach our people that we are? Israelites, Jews, or Gentiles? Gentiles. Gentiles. Right. This is what it says. 1 Corinthians 10, 20, and 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to them. He let you know. He said, hey, the things that the Gentiles, these heathen nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel, sacrifice or worship, they worship in devils. And they're killing our people that they're Gentiles, so what do you think they're doing? Worshiping devils. Read. And not to the most high. And not to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. And I would not that you should have fellowship with them. He's telling you. We're supposed to be having fellowship with devils. That's who the Gentiles sacrificing to, right? So we're supposed to be having fellowship with devils. So all you say we're supposed to have fellowship with devils. <laughs> and he said the Gentiles sacrifice the devils, you off. Read. You cannot drink the cup of the Most High and the cup of devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Most High, the Mashiach Yahushai, and the cup of devils. Read. You cannot be partakers of the Most High's table. You can't, what do you, 